In the last lecture, we learned that chords with two pitches in common can be easily substituted for one another and still retain the same function. Here is a Venn diagram that illustrates what we learned. This diagram is also a helpful tool for beginning composers in writing chord progressions. The primary chords are located in the center of each circle, 1, 4, and 5. These chords have only one function. The chords on either side of the primary chords, those a third above and a third below, can have two different functions. For example, the three chord falls into two different circles. It can function as either a tonic or a dominant. The six chord also falls into two different circles. It can function as either a tonic or a predominant. The exceptions are the two and seven chords. Although they share two notes in common, these chords are not usually substituted for one another. Let's learn how to use this Venn diagram to come up with basic chord progressions of your own. First of all, you'll need to remember the basic chord progression structure learned in the last lesson, departure, anticipation, and return. This structure can be written as the following formula. T stands for tonic, PD stands for predominant, and D stands for dominant. Next, choose a chord from each circle and then play them in clockwise order beginning and ending with the tonic function circle. From the tonic function circle, let's choose one as our starting point. From the predominant function circle, let's choose the predominant substitution chord, six. From the dominant function circle, let's choose the standard five. Returning to the tonic function circle, let's choose one as our end point. Here's a musical example to illustrate. Let's try coming up with a different chord progression. Once again, we begin with the formula tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic. From the tonic function circle, let's choose one as our starting point. From the predominant function circle, let's choose the standard four. From the dominant function circle, let's choose the dominant substitute three. Returning to the tonic function circle, let's choose the tonic substitute six as our end point. Here's a musical example to illustrate. It is important to understand that not every single piece of music ever written fits neatly into this pattern, although many do. As a beginning composer, this structure is meant to be a helpful guide and a useful starting point. Here is a Venn diagram for the minor scale chord functions. It works the same way as the previous Venn diagram for the major scale chord functions. Since there are three forms of minor, natural, harmonic, and melodic, certain chords can have more than one possible quality, major, minor, or diminished. This diagram shows the most common forms of the chords. Two and three are taken from the natural minor scale. Five and seven are taken from the harmonic minor scale. Because of this, the three chord and the five chord do not share two notes in common, but rather only one note in common. They do, however, still share the dominant function. Music theorists who have studied centuries worth of music have found that certain progressions are used more often than others. Here are two charts that illustrate this. The first is for major keys, the second is for minor keys. With so many possible progressions, you can see how the formula tonic, predominant, dominant, tonic is not a strict rule. You don't have to memorize these charts for your lesson quiz, but they may be useful to refer back to as you are writing music for your assignments, and if at some point you want to experiment and branch off beyond the standard formula.